Here today to witness and to celebrate the union of Justin Lofton to his soon-to-be bride, Jenny Kerr. God formed man of the dust of the ground, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he placed the man whom he had formed. And God caused to come from the ground of the garden of Eden every kind of animal and every kind of beast that God had created, and he brought them all before Adam, and they passed by, and whatsoever Adam called them, that was the name thereof. But there was not found an help meet for Adam. And God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him an help meet for him. The Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he opened him up and took out a rib, and he closed up the flesh instead thereof, and with the rib that he had taken from man, God made woman. And he brought her to the man. And the man said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall cleave unto his wife. And they twain shall be one flesh. Therefore what God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. Marriage is God's design. It's not the concoction or the idea of man. God designed it. Before sin entered into the world, there was marriage. Before the curse that came as a result of sin, there was marriage. Part of the original creation, God had intended that man and woman should dwell together in holy matrimony. This is a Christ-honoring institution. Marriage is God's idea. On the behalf of Justin and Jenny, I want to thank you all for being here to witness and to celebrate this union. I also want to remind you that you're not here as mere spectators, but you're here as witnesses. You will be held accountable for holding them accountable to the vows that they will shortly exchange. Each one of you means something special to this couple. They've invited you here today to witness God put them together. In light of this, who gives this woman to be married to this man? Marriage is about commitment. It's about love. It's about laughter. It's about experiences. But above all, marriage is about commitment. Jesus says in Mark 10, 7 and 8, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. Now that's commitment. You may be seated. You have two individuals who live their lives pretty much the way they want to. They were born as individuals and they live that way until they come to the point in their life when they fall in love. Then they're willing to give up their individuality so that they may be together as one. And not just together as friends or as companions, but much more than that, as husband and wife. This togetherness that I'm talking about is called marriage, and the change comes about with a commitment. Justin and Jenny won't start loving each other today. They already love each other. I've seen it, many of you've seen it. They won't start believing in each other's love today. Each believes that the other loves themselves, uh, loves the other. What happens here today is not going to change their love for each other. It's not gonna change their belief in each other's love. But something fundamental is going to change. It requires commitment. That's what it takes to make the difference that we're talking about. A commitment from her to him and from him to her. These two will accept nothing less 
that they may be together as husband and wife. Commitment. The commitment signified by the words I do will take two individuals and make them one in the sight of God and man. This commitment is required on the behalf of both parties. That is, Justin must commit to Jenny, and Jenny must reciprocate and commit back to Justin. The commitment of one without the commitment of the other would be insufficient. It wouldn't result in marriage, and they would still be two individuals. Both must say, I do. Justin could say, I do a thousand times, but if Jenny didn't respond, it means nothing. The Bible likens marriage to the relationship between people and the Lord. The Bible says in Ephesians 5, 23 to 26, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. That's commitment. And just like commitment is required on the behalf of both parties in a marriage relationship, commitment is required on behalf of both God and the individual for there to be a relationship between the two. Love by itself is insufficient. Belief by itself is insufficient. There must be commitment on both sides. There must be a mutual exchange of I do's. Now God said I do. He said I do to you, to everyone in this room, when he sent his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, into the world. The Lord Jesus said I do when he took upon himself the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. He said, I do when he died on Calvary's cross for your sins and for mine. He says, I do when he rose again from the dead. He says, I do every time the word of God is preached and he's saying to any who are here today that do not know him, I do. I do. Picture him down on one knee saying to you, I do. But that's just a one-sided I do. For the first 21 years of my life, I lived a godless life. My mother was 11 years old when she got pregnant with me. She was raped. At 12 years old, I was born, was raised by my grandparents. My grandpa was an atheist. He didn't know God. I was raised not to know God. When I was 21 years old on April the 2nd of 1996, at that grandpa's funeral, the preacher got up and preached the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, that I was a sinner, that God had died in the person of Jesus Christ for my sins. He shed his blood, and that if I would trust in him, he would save me. I'd never met that man, never read those words, never heard that message, but I knew that day that it was true. And right there in a the funeral home, I bowed my head and I said, oh God, I do. Now I didn't use those exact words, but I committed to him. I called out to him, just like that preacher said. And that day, April the 2nd of 1996, God forgave me and he saved me and he made me his child. And the difference was God had not changed. But God had changed something inside of me. And finally, for the first time in my life, I said, as it were, I do to the God who countless times and in countless ways had been saying, I do to me. Have you ever said, I do to the Lord Jesus Christ? Have you ever committed to him? The Bible says in Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It goes on to say in verse number 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. What's clear is that without calling on the name of the Lord, without receiving him, without a commitment on our part, there can be no relationship with God. I've heard people say, I love the Lord. I've heard people say, I believe in the Lord. My question today is not, do you love him? They love each other. It's not, do you believe in him? They believe in one another's love. The question is, have you ever said I do to him? He has said I do to you. Justin and Jenny, for the next few moments, are still single. But that's about to change. And, it, and it's going to change because they're going to say I do to each other. They are both going to turn their back on the single life forever. You'll never be single again. And I know you rejoice in it. Amen. If you're tired of living your single life of sin, Today, you can turn your back on that single life. Turn to the Lord Jesus Christ 
and ask him to save you. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And if you do that today, then the anniversary of their wedding, of their union, to each other can be the anniversary of your union to the Lord Jesus Christ in saving faith. Justin, Jenny, face each other and hold each other's hands. Do you, Justin, take Jenny to be your wedded wife? I do. Do you, Jenny, take Justin to be your wedded husband? I do. Justin, repeat after me. I, Justin, take I, thee, Jenny. I, Justin, take thee, Jenny. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. To protect and provide for. To protect and provide for. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. For richer and for poorer. For richer and for poor. And forsaking all others. And forsaking all others. To remain true and faithful to you as my wife. To remain true and faithful to you as my wife. In the sight of God. In the sight of God. From this day forth. From this day forth. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. Jenny, repeat after me. I, Jenny, take thee, Justin. I, Jenny, take thee, Justin. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. To reverence and obey. To reverence and obey. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. For richer and for poorer. For richer and for poorer. And forsaking all others. And forsaking all others. To remain true and faithful to you as my husband. To remain true and faithful to you as my husband. In the sight of God. In the sight of God. From this day forth. From this day forth. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. Go ahead and get the rings. Jenny, placing the ring on Justin's finger, repeat after me. With this ring, With this I ring, thee wed. With this ring, I thee wed. And Justin, placing the ring on Jenny's finger, repeat after me. With this ring, I thee wed. With this ring, I thee wed. Based on your exchanged vows and your public commitment before me and God and these witnesses today, and based on the authority of God's word, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Justin. You may kiss your bride. <laughs> what God hath joined together, let not man put asunder.
look upon the cross and selfishness forsake to be with O Lord to the promises we make we promise to each other the love you've shown to us and we pledge to give ourselves as you gave yourself for us as you gave yourself for us Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to present to you Mr. and Mrs. Justin Walton. Amen.